You see, one of the tricks of the Illuminati is they create a problem and then they provide the solution when you beg them to. And pray tell, what will the United Nations suggest when there's a global problem? They will demand a global government, a new world order. Exactly as the Maya, Hopi, Kali Yuga, and many other pagan civilizations prophesized. By 2012, the Kyoto Treaty, Agenda 21, Codex Alimentarius, and the New Pentagon will be fully operational to enforce a new world order. And the new world religion is obvious. We will all worship the Earth, Gaia, the mother goddess we saved from extinction from global warming. We will be told that to keep from repeating the mistakes that we made in the past, we must hold the Earth in higher regard than humans, just as pagan traditions require. This is too obvious to ignore. It is right in front of our faces, and yet we still refuse to see it. I guarantee you that by 2012 there will be a World War III, but it will not be between nations. It will be us and them. They know this. Why do you think the UN is consistently trying to disarm the public and the nations? They don't want us to be capable of fighting back. The proof of this is in the film released by the UN called Arm to the Teeth, where it demonizes gun ownership. It is also shown in the freedom from war policy put in place by JFK in 1961. President John Kennedy went to the United Nations, September 1961, and he presented the United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World uh, during a speech, and he said, this is the official program of the United States of America. It's a disarmament program. It calls for the United States to turn over its military to the United Nations. Now, let that sit for a second. It calls for the United States to turn over its military to the United Nations. The program ends by saying progressive controlled disarmament would proceed to a point where no state would have the military power to challenge the progressively strengthened UN Peace Force. The UN would have all military power. This policy outlines some pretty scary scenarios when you understand what it reads. It calls for the disbanding of all national armed forces and the prohibition of their reestablishment in any form whatsoever other than those required to preserve internal order and for contributions to a United Nations peace force. This clearly shows that the UN is calling for all military power to be under their control. Inspection and verification must establish both that nations carry out scheduled limitation or reductions and that they do not retain armed forces and armaments in excess of those permitted at any stage of the disarmament process. Strategic delivery vehicles will be reduced. Arms and armed forces will be reduced. And all the while, UN peacekeeping powers would be strengthened. A UN Peace Observation Group would be available to investigate any situation which might constitute a threat to or a breach of the peace. Establishing of a permanent international peace force within the United Nations, and depending on the findings of an experts commission, a halt in the production of chemical, bacteriological, and radiological weapons, and a reduction of the existing stocks or their conversion to peaceful uses. Peaceful uses of biological, chemical, and radiological weapons? Do you see how they are perverting the word peace and making this policy sound unilaterally good? There is no other way to read this publication. It clearly states that all nations will hand over their military forces to a global United Nations military. The U.S. population is currently around 300 million. The national debt is currently around 10 trillion. So the current debt, when divvied among the American people, comes out to approximately $33,000 and has been growing at a national rate of $1.46 billion a day since 2006. Now with electronic banking, wire transfers, and credit cards, people have less physical custody of their money. As of right now, the amount of money in circulation is not able to cover the national debt. This was carefully planned since the inception of the Federal Reserve Bank. And the next planned step by the elite is already in play. George Bush signed a bill implementing the North American Union. 
President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community, much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. You see, the domination of government by business is called fascism. And I'm kind of wondering how many people know what NAFTA is, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Because under Chapter 11 of the NAFTA Agreement, NAFTA tribunals trump all U.S. law if it conflicts with either A, World Bank's International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes, or B, UN Commission for International Trade Law. Now, th that sounds scary enough, but when you understand what that reads, it also gives the power to violate the First and Second Amendment, which is saying, you know, bye-bye to the Constitution. This will weaken national sovereignty and bankrupt the dollar we use now. After this happens, the Fed will call in all debts. When the debts cannot be repaid by the people, assets will be seized. And by this, I mean absolutely everything you own, including your property, your home, your vehicle, your furniture, and the clothes on your back. This plan is already in progress. And when it takes place, you will literally be owned by the Federal Reserve Bank. This is how Agenda 21 will be implemented. The seized land will be given back to nature and the people will be placed in smart growth megacities. So what are we to do? There is an overabundance of information out there for anyone to see pertaining to why this situation seems so hopeless and out of our control. But in all honesty, there is even more information out there about how to protect ourselves. The only problem we face is that most people don't know how to apply this information to their own lives and rarely anybody takes the time to spell it out for us. There are many great teachers out there teachers who have dedicated their lives to protecting the people who need protecting the most. The teacher has the most difficult role in our society because nobody likes attaining true knowledge. True knowledge encompasses all aspects of existence, good and bad. Most others do not. Hearing true knowledge upsets people because it implies that we were wrong at one point in our lives. And another character flaw is our desire to apply absolute truths to unstable foundations in our life. When we do so, we build a structure that we hope will define us best when we're reaching the end of our life on earth. So everything we think we are, everything we tell others we are, everything we base our life-changing decisions off of is all depending on a foundation that could crumble at any moment. And because we've been told our entire lives that there are certain guidelines and mores we must follow to be a decent human being, we deny everything that may pose a threat to our unstable foundation. This is why we despise true teachers. We lump these teachers into the same category as terrorists, and the method for spotting these teachers and terrorists are just as flimsy and ridiculous as the methods used to spot witches. William Cooper, a loving father and husband, friend of many, simply a teacher trying to better humanity and protect fellow citizens across the globe. They became a mystery to the others, and the priesthood was born. No king ever existed without the permission of the priesthood. The kings never had the power, and don't to this day. Kings exist at the whim of the real power, which is the priesthood standing behind the throne. It is a method of encoding information through a system of mathematics and numbers. It is some of the most ancient knowledge that man has ever possessed and has been kept secret and given only to those who have proven themselves worthy through the process of initiation. There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours. 
because you're operating from a place of ignorance. And until you change that, you're going to be bumbling around, bumping into each other, saying and doing the wrong things, not understanding the nature of your en enemy. And if you don't understand the nature of your enemy and the weapons they use, you cannot fight that enemy. You can't fight the battle. You shouldn't even be on the battlefield. Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him went into Osama bin Laden's hideout interviewed him and his top leadership and he came out and told everybody within three weeks Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel now don't you think that's kind of strange folks you see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. Some doofus jerk-off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him. And I'm telling you, be prepared for a major attack. But it won't be Osama bin Laden, it will be those behind the New World Order. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. This is how it feels to be alive. This is how What is our common bond truly? Freedom! Freedom! Without freedom, you can't be a Christian no matter what denomination you belong to. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't own a donut shop. You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't be an American because that's what it's all about. And that's the only thing that it's all about. Nothing else. Nothing else. You know, Barry understands sometimes what a terrible burden it is to know some of the things that I know and try to wake people up and impart this knowledge to them and find out that they just have walls built in front of them. They want to be slaves. That's why my broadcast scares the hell out of socialists. You see, what happens when you broadcast the truth is you piss everybody off. <laughs> I maintain that the only true salvation from any oppression or enslavement is self-empowerment, knowledge, consciousness. This is true rebellion. Don't get caught up in the 87% of people who follow the leader. People who think that they are rebels because they denounce authority simply because it's the latest fashion. Don't march the streets claiming that you are the enlightened one because you read a book or saw a film that gave you a glimpse into an uncommon knowledge. Don't scream phrases into a megaphone that you borrowed from another person's research. And don't proclaim yourself an original thinker because you belong to a group that represents an unpopular belief. Those are all examples of the other side of the coin of groupthink leading a false rebellion. False rebellion is dangerous because it gives the illusion that you are free and thinking for yourself. 
A true rebellion, a true revolution, begins when you quit following and start War III. But it will not be between nations. It will be us and them. They know this. Why do you think the UN is consistently trying to disarm the public and the nations? They don't want us to be capable of fighting back. The proof of this is in the film released by the UN called Armed to the Teeth, where it demonizes gun ownership. It is also shown in the freedom from war policy put in place by JFK in 1961. President John Kennedy went to enforce a new world order. And the new world religion is obvious. We will all worship the earth, Gaia, the mother goddess we saved from extinction from global warming. We will be told that to keep from repeating the mistakes that we made in the past, we must hold the earth in higher regard than humans, just as pagan traditions require. This is too obvious to ignore. It is right in front of our faces and yet we still refuse to see it. I guarantee you that by 2012 there will be a world... You see, one of the tricks of the Illuminati is they create a problem and then they provide the solution when you beg them to. And pray tell, what will the United Nations suggest when there's a global problem? They will demand a global government, a new world order. Exactly as the Maya, Hopi, Kali Yuga, and many other pagan civilizations prophesized. By 2012, the Kyoto Treaty, Agenda 21, Codex Alimentarius, and the new Pentagon will be fully operational. The disarmament would proceed to a point where no state would have the military power to challenge the progressively strengthened UN Peace Force. The UN would have all military power. This policy outlines some pretty scary scenarios when you understand what it reads. It calls for the disbanding of all national armed forces and the prohibition of their reestablishment in any form whatsoever other than those required to preserve internal order and for contributions to a United Nations Peace Force. The United Nations, September 1961, and he presented the United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament of a Peaceful World uh, during a speech, and he said, this is the official program of the United States of America. It's a disarmament program. It calls for the United States to turn over its military to the United Nations. Now, let that sit for a second. It calls for the United States to turn over its military to the United Nations. The program ends by saying progressive control 